Thanks, Phil. So what's next for TerraFugia? In order to deliver the most advanced product to our customers, TerraFugia's transition will be in development for another two years. Once deliveries start in 2011, we will ramp up production quickly to match demand. The final production location has not yet been determined, but we expect that TerraFugia will create hundreds of jobs once we are in production. All of us are excited to be part of this venture. With this accomplishment, TerraFugia is poised to become a catalyst that will usher in a new era of personal aviation. Last but certainly not least, I want to take this opportunity to acknowledge the people who have brought us to where we are today. The TerraFugia team consists of an outstanding group of engineers and business leaders with backgrounds ranging from the MIT Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics to big aerospace companies like GE, Northrop Grumman, McDonnell Douglas, now Boeing, from Massachusetts electric vehicle startup company called Selectria, uh, to Draper Laboratories and Arthur D. Little. From the insurance industry to the competitive sailing industry, you could not ask for a better team to develop this product. This fantastic team would not have been able to accomplish what we have without the continued support of our network of investors and advisors. This milestone is as much a cause for celebration for them as it is for us. These diligent investors understand that the current mix of new technology and perfect timing has created a significant opportunity for TerraFugia. I want to take this opportunity to thank our corporate sponsors, SolidWorks and CableOrganizer.com, who reached out to TerraFugia before our vehicle was even proven. I also want to thank our corporate partners from the aviation industry who have supported our development program with in-kind assistance, Garmin, Bose, ICOM, David Clark, Telex, CO Guardian, Aloft Technology, Plain Sights, and Dynan Avionics. Our company would not be on the path to success without the support of our friends in the aviation industry. Lockwood Aviation, Willis Aviation, USI, Ballistic Recovery Systems, Air Graphics, the Plattsburgh International Airport, Shelter Air Aviation Services, the Lawrence Municipal Airport, Lawrence G. Hanscom Field Airport, Freedom Aero Credit, Aviation Capital Experts, the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, the Light Aircraft Manufacturers Association, the EAA, and in particular our local chapter, EAA 106. Finally, I'd like to thank our friends at MIT and, uh, and our chase pilot, Gura Guth, who is here today, uh, who flew me safely alongside the transition as, as Phil uh, did his flying. Uh, and the regulators who have helped us out for the past few years, our friends at the FAA, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, the EPA, the Massachusetts Registry of Motor Vehicles, and the Division of Insurance. At this time, uh, we'd like to show how the vehicle converts between flying and driving. Sam just popped open the door, and Sam will do a demonstration. In order to convert between flight mode and drive mode, the vehicle has to be stopped on the ground with the engine shut down. The pilot then enters in a personal identification number on a keypad in the cockpit. Once that number is entered, he can move a lever, unlocking the wings manually, and then use a couple of toggle switches to fold up the wings. Thanks, Sam. You can then start up the vehicle and be on your way. At this point, let me uh, turn it over and show you the video of the first flight. And uh, while we're watching that, I would be happy to open up the floor for questions. Yeah, Phil, you want to? There it is. Bill, you want to know? No. The aircraft was in the air for about 37 seconds and covered, what, approximately 3,000 feet down the runway, something like that? 